Okay, I have an amazing realization, at least amazing for me, and it has to do with the importance of not listening to your intuition, or what feels like your intuition, or however you want to call it, your inner voice. You can't tell, but I'm in Acapulco. My inner voice said, don't go, oh my god, I don't want to go, it's awful, it's so much better. Anyhow, not just my inner voice, the outside world conspired with it. It wasn't conspired, I mean, it just happened. So what happened in the outside world? I was supposed to come here two weeks ago. My cats got sick, really, really badly sick with the flu. A cat flu, not fatal, but anyway. Okay, so there was that then. I was supposed to come here yesterday. On Tuesday, in other words, yesterday was Wednesday, on Tuesday I went to town to do banking, my car died. Well, who could ask for more of a sign than that? So, but anyway, I managed to find a garage. In other words, I felt like I was circumventing, getting around all the voices that said, don't go. Inside me was still yelling, don't go, you don't want to go, why should you go, you don't need to go. Well, it was business. I'm taking photographs, I take good photographs there. So anyway, so it was business. Um, but I was going, oh, somebody else could take the pictures and much easier than having me fly from Montreal to Acapulco. Uh, that is not what matters. What matters is, already as we were coming into land in Acapulco and I was looking at those high, rolling, wild hills around Acapulco, and how they looked wild from the airplane. Everything in me said, it's good to be here. Oh wow, amazingly good to get away. We haven't been away from winter in years now. And it was like, well how come all my voices said, don't go, you don't want to go. The only reason in the end that I went is I had made a commitment to go. So it was like, okay, you've made the commitment to go, you will go, you have to go. It was really hard going against all those voices. I had the whole day to pack. I didn't pack. I dragged my feet packing. I wanted to leave for the city around 5, around 7, around 9. The flight was at 6.30 in the morning. You're supposed to get there three hours before at the latest, two hours before, in other words, 4.30 in the morning, I left for the city around 1 in the morning. That was as fast as I could get myself together to go. So, one would have thought, and I've heard so much about listening to your inside voice, that I was doing something totally wrong by not listening to myself. So I'm asking a much more important question right now, I think, then. That simple thing about listen to yourself. When should we not? Why should we not? When is our inside voice totally off? Crazy. <clears throat> now, had the flight crashed, everyone would have said, see, she heard herself. You know, all the people who knew that I was reluctant to go. Oh my God, she should have listened to herself. But nobody could know until I got here that getting here was actually what suited me a lot better. And then I was thinking, how it would hit me today, in December I had another chance to go down south. It wouldn't have been work, a friend broke up with his girlfriend, had an extra ticket and said, you can come to Cuba. It would have cost something, um, but not much, oh God, because he it's an airline employee and had had this amazing discount. I wasn't worried that, you know, it would turn into an awkward situation. We're good friends. Um, a nice guy, could have enjoyed his company. Um, but somehow or other, my inside voice kicked in, no. Now, I also had another good reason. The flight was returning on the 24th, Christmas Eve. And I thought, oh my God, to come in late alone on Christmas Eve, to come to old house, but think of what I gave up for that Christmas Eve. Now, it didn't feel like I was giving up anything. Between then and now, 
about six weeks, I've never heard something inside me, oh my God, you should have gone to Cuba. All my voices were lined up with good to stay home, strongly lined up. It's only now that I'm going, hey, if I'd gone, I might have had a really good time. And it turns out that a, my friend met a buddy of his at the airport. Well, they hung out together. Well, if I'd gone, the two of them could have hung out some of the time. I could have been with them when I wanted to. They also went to Havana. My God, what did I turn down? I'm just going. So the real importance of not listening to oneself. And I'll say when someone else listens to themselves and I go, oh my God, that doesn't make sense. I'm somewhere different. For example, a friend was very glad she hadn't let her daughter go to Europe uh, on one of these exchange things. Everything in me went, well, she should have let her go. My friend didn't see it that way at all and I didn't argue. And then I'm going, all her voices were then and continue to be lined up with that, that was the good decision. And that is when our intuition goes wrong. If everything inside us is set on a track with a decision we make seems so like the right decision, but we don't live the opposite. We don't hear the opposite. You've heard so many people going on, I should have listened to my inner voice, my little voice told me, etc. But here, my voice did not tell me. And nobody outside me was telling me. Now I'm so grateful. I even put in a, a call um, where I didn't get an answer and I would have needed that answer that it was okay not to go, not to go. Now, then afterwards, I was so grateful. Oh my God, thank God that wasn't there. Or else I would have missed out on this and I wouldn't have known it was the wrong decision. That is the big thing. When your intuition is wrong, you follow it. And you don't get the feedback that it was the wrong decision because everything in you continues to say, oh my, thank God I didn't go. I really didn't want to go. It's like a little kid not wanting to go to school. And if the parents let him not go to school, she or he'll be so happy. Whew, thank God I didn't go to school. I didn't want to go to school. But, for a lot of us, I remember for me, it was a really good thing going to school. I really liked it. I don't know how I can know when my inner voices are lined up wrong. It's almost only because I've now lived the correction, like, oh, well, my God, was I ever off, that I know it was off. Um, it's a really, really tough thing. You might even call it, what I'm saying is counterintuitive because our intuition tells us my voices are right. But so often we have been programmed wrong. Everything, it's something, we're on a wrong track and everything has reinforced that track. But when I think about it, I think about, let's say, women who are hooked on guys who beat them and everything and they're convinced they can save them. That's their inner voice saying, I can save him. Okay, now some of those women, there's another inner voice and it goes, he's a jerk, he's beat me, etc. But I'm talking about the times when things are so lined up that it's like being on a road and everything goes along that road and it feels so right in our intuition. So I don't know what your own experience is. I will say, I'm going to be a little more careful from now on when my inner voice goes, no, don't do that. Or even, yes, do that. It kind of turns the world upside down a little. I wish I had a solution. I don't. The only solution that I have actually is really just be aware that your inner voice may be giving you some totally limiting, crappy advice, even dangerous advice, cutting you off from experiences, 
I don't know if I'm going to get another chance to go to Cuba. I won't get it at that rate. And it just fell in my lap and I closed the door. Sure, it was a good thing. I am so glad that I am here. This time, without a friend, alone. Um, not on a magnificent beach, but I'll tell you, Acapulco is quite nice. I'm, uh, the place that I'm photographing is in the middle of a golf course, 10 minute walk from the ocean with a pool, and that's what I said no to. From cold, minus something Montreal. Now, of course, I do love winter, so it's not like Montreal is agony. <sighs> anyway, over and over again, what I am just dealing with is how wrong intuition can be. Or what feels like intuition, if you don't want to call it intuition. But then, I have no way of knowing that it isn't intuition. So, that's it. Take care.